Melissa and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Morning. Morning, Joe. Morning. Oh, something smells really good in here and I didn't cook it. What the heck is going on? I mailed my breakfast. <laughs> and when you threw all that out, you ordered in from a restaurant? <laughs> You're not kidding. Cinnamon rolls. It's true. From scratch? If scratch means by dawn's early light, then yes, my shiny-headed domestic friend. They're good. And they're real. So, Joe, how's it feel not to be top chef anymore? No, it's not really a competition, Ryder. It's just... Psst, Burke. <laughs> From refrigerator to table in just minutes. I just use that for the picture, you know, the way an artist uses a nude model. Damn you, what do you want? Dolby sound system in the SUV. Fine. Ten speakers. Six. Eight. Deal. You don't really need more than eight. <laughs> I still got it. You're absolutely right, your aunt has finally taught me. The only thing left for me to do now is just listen to the um, sweet music of defeat. Hi, normal family. Lennox. Can I get a ride in with you today? My mom is having one of her meltdowns. She's not throwing stuff, is she? Nah, it's more she goes to the supermarket in her wedding dress. I've seen her. Good morning, Phoebe. Lennox, I have some news that is gonna make you love me. I got an email from your school asking if I chaperone the school dance on Saturday night, and I replied, nah-uh, not making that rookie mistake. Proud of me? <laughs> you can do it if you want. We're not going. Nobody asked you guys, huh? It's just that the 10th grade boys are all... They have a word for it in French. Les geeks. <laughs> Why do you need a date? Just go with each other. I used to do it all the time. And then when you get to the school dance, you just snake some other girl's date. Which is wrong. <laughs> Absolutely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> cool idea. Want to go to the dance with me? Sure. Want to go to the dance with me? Sure. Great. We both have dates. And if you even think of chaperoning, I will call Child Protective Services. Yes. I guess you're stuck with me. Toledo needs a new youth center to center the youth of Toledo. Well, this will help voters sleep at night and while I'm talking. <laughs> Did you like it? I wrote it. Oh, well, you know, let's just save this for a special occasion. <laughs> All right, well, let me take a stab at this in my own voice. Um, youth center. Youth center. Youth center. I need a snack. <laughs> oh my God. Longtime Toledo councilman Arlen Tepper accused of employing illegals as domestic help. They picked up his gardener and his cleaning lady. His house is gonna be a mess. <laughs> Hey, 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 gossip won't get this speech written, Missy, okay? So, unless it's an item about Matt Damon's fetish for little blonde city council women, let's focus on this. Absolutely. Ooh, Tepper's having a press conference in an hour. There's a picture of him crying. He looks so sad. <laughs> you're, you're sure this is 100% reliable information? It's all over Facebook. Well, that never lies. <laughs> Fine, we're just gonna go with it then. Hey, uh, Mel, we have a very serious situation here. <laughs> Okay, um, Lennox and Phoebe, in order to save money, bought a couple's ticket to go to the dance, and now there's a rumor going around school that they are a gay couple. Oh, no, oh, no, she's gonna blame me! Ah, I think it's gonna blow over. No, these things stick. First day of seventh grade, Bethany Gersh threw up at lunch. For the next six years, she was known as Barfany Gersh. In high school, they called me Stretch. It was ironic. Was it? <laughs> Oh, you poor sweet child. How are you holding up? The gay thing. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> isn't that hilarious? <laughs> but won't, aren't, isn't everybody being cruel? Hard to tell. It's high school. <laughs> Come on, my gay sister friend. Let's go get tickets to the Lilith Fair and watch a little WNBA action. <laughs> <laughs> She is really upset, Burke. You totally called that one. Oh my God, my niece is a fake lesbian. We're gonna be on Oprah. Uh-oh, this 
is big. No, 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 no. You're not taking me off the speech again with another piece of gossipy. Uh oh. Knock, knock. Joe? Joe? You got a minute? I'm at lunch. It's five o'clock. I eat late. <laughs> Excuse me, I just. Gosh. Your veins get so poppy when you do that. Uh, Joe, I got a situation here. And he's got a situation there. <laughs> okay, keep it in your pants, stretch. I'll tell you what, why don't I um, stop what I'm doing and give my undivided attention to you? How about I do that for you? There's a huge problem downtown. A longtime councilman has just been forced to resign because he had illegal domestic employees. So the city attorney has demanded... Requested that, we... that all city council people submit proper documentation for all their, you know. For me? Yeah, I snuck over the border to get this job. <laughs> what do they think, I spent uh, 15 hours in the back of a van to live like a mole man in your basement? I know, it's completely unfair. I mean, nobody's asking the mayor for his papers. It's just plain wrong. Oh. That's what I should have said when they called me. That would have been very brave. God, I admire what you almost said. <laughs> the oven's preheated. And listen, don't worry about it, all right? I will get you the papers. See, no problem. We need them by Friday. That could be a problem. <laughs> problem? What do you mean, problem? All right, 375 degrees in the oven, 45 minutes, and uh, back to you. Problem? What do you mean, problem? I'm just not exactly sure where my birth certificate might, you know, precisely be. Uh-huh. 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 Where's your papers? Subpoenaed, all right, along with every other personal and professional document in my life. After a global financial scandal and a lovely little divorce, my life has been stuffed into a series of cardboard boxes. It has been so much fun. Okay, so where are those boxes now, she asked, close to strangling him. One of six different places, <laughs> if anywhere at all. Joe, when the uh, city attorney asked the city council people to submit documentation, that's big stuff. What the hell am I supposed to do about it? Find them. What else can I do? How can I help? Oh, my God, I'm feeling lightheaded. <laughs> Stephanie, you need to go lay down. You have a couch at your apartment, right? I just don't like it when you guys fight. <laughs> okay, uh, what about where you grew up? I mean, even New Jersey has a department of records. I'm sure I can just have my office call whatever Bruce Springsteen song town you were born in, and they'll overnight the records, and then you can go back to your lasagna and nannies of steel training. First of all, watch what you say about Jersey, okay? And secondly, I wasn't born there. Fine! What city? Where's the plaque that says on this spot the most annoying person I know is born? For your information, I was born in the proud city of Weijungbu. Weijung what? It's in Korea, a little north of Seoul. My dad was military, and I was born in an army hospital in Weijungbu. Okay, you're born in Korea, you don't have any papers, and you work for me. Oh my God! I have an undocumented Korean nanny! <laughs> As hard as this may be for you to believe, I am not Korean. <laughs> and I have my documents, okay? I just don't have them. Okay, uh, let's just call your mother. I'm sure she has some backup records. <laughs> my mom? <laughs> yeah, the only records she has are Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Maybe the Bee Gees. <laughs> Joe, this is serious, okay? Is it possible that your ex-wife has them? All right, fine, I'll call, uh, Tiffany. <laughs> See if she knows. <laughs> she said something about, you know, traveling abroad to Tahiti or Barbados. <laughs> Look at her going all around the world and I'm stuck here in your kitchen spinning lettuce. My job is kind of at stake here, so could you give me a sliver of hope of something? <sighs> that might be the best lasagna I've ever made. <laughs>
Is this really the hill that you want to die on? Whose side are you guys on? The side that keeps me off your principal speed dial. <laughs> oh! oh! She's so militant. Well, thanks for being on my side just then. Sure, it's the least I could do. Sort of makes up for what happened this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. All right, a reporter cornered me when I was at the supermarket earlier today. Anyway, he knew that I worked for you, knew I hadn't filed my papers. Little, um, Weasley guy in a tie. Not Jerry Devine. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> anyway, he comes up to me and he says, um, you know, what are you covering up there? I mean, obviously you're an American. And I'm like, oh, really? You can tell I'm an American just by looking at me, can you? Well, guess what? I'm from a Korea, pal. How about that, you mouthy fraud? <laughs> I actually said something a little bit stronger there, but it had the same initials. Okay, Jerry has a column every Friday. He's gonna tear me apart. Why don't you just burn a flag while you're at it? I got a little hot. You know, what was I supposed to do? Stand there quietly and look American. Relax, all right? There's good news, too. Tiffany gets back in the morning and she's sending over the file boxes. The ones that contain your birth certificate and your proof of citizenship and everything that says you're legal? Absolutely. Very likely. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Dwayne, you'll have Mr. Longo's documents in your hand tomorrow without fail. Pleasure as always. You scum-sucking leech. <laughs> wow, you handled that without even breaking a sweat. I need a dry blouse. Ugh. Well, our city attorney has just informed me that I am the only remaining council person that has yet to file papers. You're kind of like a rebel. <sighs> yeah, a rebel without a job. This is getting serious. Well, what's gonna happen if we can't find Joe's papers? Well, I'd hate to have to... You know, cause he's... And the kids, really. And even I... I hate this. I mean, I know Joe's the greatest, but at a certain point, don't you have to... I don't know if I can... You could practice by fake firing me. Okay, I'll try. Stephanie, this is not an easy conversation to have. Oh my God! <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, that was super helpful. <laughs> Joe? Kitchen. Look, I just got here. Your files, this is great. Oh, now I don't have to do anything else. You're pretty disorganized, though. Who cares? We'll go through them all. I mean, how long did it take? From the way you were talking, I was expecting a whole lot more. <laughs> Holy son of a box, does this end? Hey, ML, I'm already on my second box. I zipped through this first one in like half an hour. We'll never get through all these by tomorrow. Look, if we all pitch in, we could totally do this. What's the alternative? Well, <sighs> I'll take this pile. See, that's why I love working with you, Ranch. You always stick stuff for people. Yep. I'm a sticker. Upper. Oh. All right. This one's done. Burke, what are you doing? I just said that one was done. Well, I thought you were sliding them over to me so I could do them. What? No, I've been sliding them over to you because I'm done with them. That's why they have a big red check mark on them. I thought the check meant, hey, check this box out. <laughs> so, I just did this whole pile for nothing? Oh, Lennox, baby. Come on, go to bed. Go to bed. I have paper cuts on my face. Uh. <laughs> longer than writer. Yes, you did. You did a good, good job. Here it is. <gasps> Fantastic. I've been looking for this thing for 20 years. Uh, this is a picture of five scrawny boys roasting marshmallows. Yeah, me and my bunkmate from Camp Arrowhead, cabin 12. Lenny choke up right there. He could turn his eyelids inside out. <laughs> Those were good times. I need to go home and give my dad a sponge bath. Uh, he's not sick, just lazy. <laughs> So are you going to, you know... I hope he takes it better than I did. Have fun cleaning your dad. Joe? 
Yeah, what are we looking for again? Uh, your proof of citizenship papers? Yes, absolutely good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> listen, Joe, it's, uh, this is not an easy conversation to have. I got him! I got him! I, I found your papers! I'm legal. And you've got the cutest little footprint! Where did you find these? I looked out my window when I spotted a box, left it on the driveway. <gasps> Ryder, I could kiss you! I will kiss you! Hey, hey, back off. <laughs> okay, a hug. <laughs> All right, take that, reporter scum. Take that, city attorney weasel. Yeah, take that down to city hall. Yes, yes, going, good. Go get ready for school, dude. You're gonna drive on no sleep? Is that safe? We got airbags, man, they're like big pillows. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hey, Mom, how are you? Oh, listen, Mom, great news. You know the documents I need you to find for me? Well, you don't need to look any further because we found them. Yeah. What? One second. Ah, uh, come in. Hey, buddy. What's uh, going on, huh? What's new in your world? What you been um, printing lately? <laughs> Nothing. Joe, shouldn't we be going to school? Funniest thing, you know, I was talking to my mom the other day and I told her it was really important that I find my citizenship document. And guess what she found this morning in her garage next to her old 45s? Mama's guns? Yeah, she does. But I was talking about the paper. She found it. The only copy. And it'll be here tomorrow. So you can imagine my surprise when you just found something a bit ago that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's this? Let me see. Wow, look at this. Wow, this must be one of the earlier drafts, huh? Seems like this one was issued by the great state of now Jersey. <laughs> I have to go stop this. Your rank could get in serious trouble for passing fraudulent documents, dude. I was just trying to help. Look, I know this came from a good place, okay? And it actually, it actually means the world to me that you did this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to I... go, go save her, all right? Well, I... oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Ladies, Councilwoman Burke and the city attorney have an announcement for all of you. I am pleased to finally be handing over these documents to our city attorney, certifying that my domestic employee, who is here right now, strangely. Hi. Joe. The, uh, nanny. <clears throat> How you guys doing? Uh, there is, of course, no need for him to actually be here. <laughs> I tried to call your cell phone, but it was turned off. A very bad time. Well, it's very important. Yes, yeah, so is this. That's why this camera's here. <laughs> the kids knew how desperate I was to find my papers. Okay, reduce it to three words. Writer, Photoshop, felony. Got it. Burke, I got meetings. Can we just take the pictures and go? And although these papers prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the legality of my esteemed employee, Joseph Longo, American... Where are we going with this? Anybody's guess. <laughs> I object to singling out a few hardworking people whose only real transgression is their lack of political clout. Turning in these papers would be capitulating to unfairness. You're not giving me the papers, are you? This is where you give them the papers. I say no way in heck. You will never get these papers. <laughs> Don't make me subpoena your bra. I will take your questions now. Is it true your niece is banned from the Grant High School dance because she's part of a gay couple? What? If your niece marries this girl, will you attend the wedding? This is what you wanted to ask? This is why you're all here? Yeah. Oh, for crying out loud. None of you care about this whole citizenship thing? Old news. If your niece and her wife have children, will they be welcome in your home? Oh, this is idiotic. All right, Lennox is not gay. It doesn't mean we love her any less, though. <laughs> Look, Burke, I'm gonna need this guy's papers. Those aren't real. The papers. <laughs> you will have the real ones in the morning. Tomorrow morning? You know what, I could probably make that work. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> hey, I am sorry that my messy personal life caused you so much trouble here at work. No, it's okay. You know, what really got me upset was the thought of losing you... youth votes. Yeah, you know, for the uh, re-election next year. Yeah, no, the youth vote can be very fickle. Definitely want to hold on to that one. Yeah, you do. You do. 
Yes. Yeah, so, uh, thanks for riding to the rescue. No, listen, it was the least I could do. I mean, you know, it's just... Yeah, I know. Okay. All right. Well, I'll... oh, you wanted to... Oh, you wanted... No, what, what do you a... want to... Oh. Okay. It's... I'll see you at home. I'll see you at home. Okay. Yeah, you're blown what up. What do you want to... What? Blow up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sensitive remark has cost me all of my credit school. I was the rebel political lesbian. Everybody wanted to talk to me. And now, poof, I'm just another girl. So are you gonna go to the school dance tomorrow because Joe's gonna have to drive you? I have a work thing. <laughs> what has happened to me today doesn't upset you? I'm not gonna lie, honey. It's like, pff, nothing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm sorry and all, but yeah. Fine. Can you take Phoebe too? I'd be glad to, yeah. Oh! <laughs> Nicely done, Burke. You acted like you didn't care and you forced her to calm herself down. Yeah. That's what I did. And Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hey, aren't you supposed to turn the power off before you do that? What am I, a girl? Ow! Mm, it's nothing. Yeah, well, if you had hair, I'd be standing up. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, we're just gonna be, you know. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see that? I can already tell you really like them. And did you see all those piercings? I'm pretty sure I could hear the wind whistling through them. And they never say hello. How come they never say hello? Because they're teenagers. That's what they don't do. You're also not allowed to sit at their lunch table either. All right, well, I'm not going to put up with it. I'm going up to Lennox's room right now. And lecture her in front of her friends? That'll be really effective. Well, what am I supposed to do? You're asking me? I don't have kids. Neither do I. They were abandoned by my sister. Oh, that was my big mistake, having a sister. <laughs> Relax, all right? Lennox is a good girl. Yeah, but I'm just worried. When I was her age, if someone told me not to do it, I would smoke it, drink it, or date it. Yes, we know. When you graduated high school, they retired your thong. Look, the friends you have in high school are critical, okay? Good friends inspire you. Bad friends teach you how to replace your dad's scotch with iced tea. Mel, I seriously doubt all the poor choices you made in life were because you had a bad friend. Oh, I didn't have a bad friend. I was the bad friend. <laughs> With me. Hey, you. Surprise. What's with that? Well, last time I wore it, you said you liked it, so I thought you might want it. Oh, it's so pretty. Does it come with an agenda? <laughs> a little bit. There's a party tonight at City Hall that is going to be off the hook. <laughs> but anyway, there's going to be a bunch of young people, and since you're a young people, there's gonna be music. Cute boys. Probably sushi. Sure, if I can borrow some shoes. Oh, like maybe those red peep toes you said you'd die before you'd let me wear? <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but uh, pantyhose are a must. Clean feet, not teen feet. Very subtle, puppet master. What? In the old country, when marriages were arranged, there was an exchange of beads at livestock. This is just a fun event with the added benefit that maybe Lennox can make a few new friends. You know, ones that can't be conveniently threaded together. Uh, 
You said sushi. I like sushi. What is this? It's pigs in a blanket. <laughs> oh. Mm. It's E. coli in a blanket. Give me that. No, don't ever eat those, ever. This is actually awesome. It's the best funeral I've ever been to. Are you kidding? This is a very exciting evening. They're giving public service awards to the future leaders of Toledo. Or as they're known, the Flots. They used to be called the Toledo's, but they were mocked. No, oh, really? Go mix mingle. Ah, so that's your game. You're pimping me out to nerds. This is a nice group of civic-minded, clean-cut, optimistic teens. So yes, nerds. But some of these nerds are hot-ish. Yeah, super foxy. I'm gonna call a cab. Hi. According to this dorky name tag, I'm Brett. You must be... Bite me. <laughs> I'm Lennox. My aunt dragged me here. Mel Burke, representative for the 7th District and official niece dragger. And the engine behind funding for the two new animal shelters. Yes, I might be that engine. Oh, good. I thought they were all going to be raging geeks. So has the decision been made whether or not these will be no-kill shelters? That is a very astute and handsome question. But um, I will have to get back to you on that later because I'm actually waiting to talk to the mayor if only those butt-kissing, brown-nosing associates of mine would back off. I can help you with that. Hey, mayor! Get over here. What? what no, are you oh my gosh. Yelling at. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Should I call security? No, I, I think I can handle it. Dad, Miss Burke wants to talk to you. Oh, you're his dad. Of course, because a person can be both a mayor and a dad, and in that case, that would be you, Mayor Dad. <laughs> I'll introduce you around. So now that I have your ear, I wanted to talk to you about a critical health initiative that I'm Lighten proposed... up, Councilwoman. This is a party. Forget about work. <laughs> Ex-wives and alimony. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. So I'm proposing a mobile clinic to bring free dental care to downtown Toledo. I like to call it the Smile Mobile. Look at that. The kids are hitting it off. Those are tomorrow's Toledo's. Today. <laughs> Fills you with hope, doesn't it? Yep, I am covered in hope bumps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> I just saved your life. <laughs> What was that, like five miles? Five minutes. Give it to me in terms I can understand. How many cookies can I eat now? Let's go. Mrs. Geller. Hello. Hello, Mel. My, I haven't seen you since that incident with the election sign on my lawn. Uh, Mrs. Geller, I was not removing my opponent's sign. It, it blew over in the wind. Mm. The wind which you created by kicking it? Hi, Mrs. Geller. You live across the street, remember? I know that. I'm meeting my date. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I'm just gonna call your daughter Ellen right now. Look, there's my young man who's crazy now. <laughs> We're gonna have a blast tonight, Mrs. Geller. Hey, what's with your Greek grand cougar? Okay, so the school has this dumb rule that in order to graduate, I need 40 hours of community service by the end of the term, which is Monday. And Mrs. Geller's daughter needed someone to keep her company while she went to Vegas. Um, since she's gonna be staying for dinner, I'll uh, set another plate. Oh, I need 40 hours. She's here till Monday. Oh, lucky us! <laughs> Come on, Mrs. G, you promised you'd teach me how to play pinochle. Hopefully it's more fun than it sounds. It's not. <laughs> Going to the mall. Wait, wait a second. I don't think I like the idea of you wandering around aimlessly with your colorful group of friends. As it happens, I'll be wandering around aimlessly with Brett and the other flots. Oh, then fantastic. Go. Wander successfully. Flot till you drop. Will do. Mmm, smells delicious. Bananas Foster? Back off my banana, lady. <laughs> These are personal consumption only. Fire in the hole, everybody. Whoa! Woo! That's what I'm talking about! Yeah! Woo! Good night. Hey, 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 wait, come back over here. So, how did everything go with those crazy, cool flock kids? Come on, girlfriend, share. I just, uh, you know, didn't fit in. Good night. Well, well, maybe not right away, but you should give those kids another chance. Maybe start a wicked cool study group. Burke, 
You know that line that you don't want to cross? It's uh, right there behind you, so just scooch back a little bit. They just aren't the kind of people I'm interested in spending my time with. Lennox, that is so judgmental. You should be open to trying new things. Really? Really? Like drinking and drugs? Fine, Aunt Mel. Next time I'll stick around for a shot and a hit. Hit? Okay, what are you talking about? I want details. Names, places, times. Well, uh, after the mall, a whole bunch of those crazy cool flat kids wanted to get drunk and high. Oh my gosh, what about Brett? Oh, he was pretty upset. Good, because he brought all the beer and nobody paid him back. <laughs> and then he got pissed because I didn't want to drink. Oh, he's gonna get paid back, all right. <laughs> so, I called a cab. Was I wrong? No, you were very, very right. So, good night? Yes, good night. So, here's my plan. Step one, find boy. Step two, beat boy senseless. Step three, enjoy the satisfaction of steps one and two. Yeah, I have an even simpler plan. Let boy hang with his crowd and be glad Lennox didn't want to have anything to do with him. What? This little dweeb offers a 15-year-old drugs and alcohol and he's just gonna get away with it? Well, nothing happened. Lennox took care of herself. This was a good thing. What are you talking about? This guy is still out there. Out there what? Offering girls beer they can refuse? You know what, I am protecting Lennox, but I see you have a lot of other things going on here, like uh, work and stuff. Wait, so you think I'm backing off because he's the mayor's son? That's something that I should think? No! This is the way I'd handle the situation with anyone's son. You think I don't care about Lennox? Look, she's up there right now, clean and sober, with her honor intact. I don't know how I'm gonna live with myself. Well, that boy's gonna pay. With blood. Okay, Joe, you know that line you shouldn't cross? Well, I can't even see it from here. You should scooch back about a mile or two. Good night, Mel, dear. Good night, Mrs. Geller. All right, dear. Am I a scrappy little tramp with a bowler hat and a mustache? Uh, no. Am I Will Smith? Oh. I wish. Hey, Joe. Hey. Joe, what the hell are you doing here? Well, I'm here to talk to the mayor, work things out. Well, you can't just walk in there. I know, I have an appointment. How? I haven't been able to get on his calendar for weeks. <laughs> hey, Lois, pretty. Pencil cup. Oh, thank you, Miss Burke. Oh, uh, listen, this gentleman doesn't really need to see the mayor, so his appointment is canceled. Okay. No, it's not. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Look, the mayor needs to know what's going on here, Mel. No, he doesn't need to know what's going on. He's the mayor. What is going on out here? I'm trying to take a nap. <laughs> Who are you? Joe Longo, sir. Oh, you the councilwoman's husband? God, no. <laughs> I'm her, uh, nanny. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you both come in? Oh, Lois, hold my calls and uh, give me a falafel. Okay. <sighs> so? They haven't got all day. Uh, well, sir, there's, uh, there's no easy way to bring this up. We're here to talk about what happened with Lennox and your son at the party. Okay, one easy way. Oh, the party issue. Yeah, I guess we can't dodge it. It's always tough when your own child is involved in something inappropriate. I feel for you, Councilwoman, because I know you took in those troubled kids after their parents abandoned them. Yeah, please don't make me out to be a hero. Wasn't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sure you're doing the very best you can, but teenagers with issues could be difficult to control. They act out with, with rowdy behavior, they use drugs, they experiment with sex. I'm sorry, when you say um, teenagers with issues, who are we talking about? Lennox. It's my understanding she supplied the alcohol. I'm sorry, what? Joe, uh, well, we know there was alcohol there. My son, Brett, also reported that she was, um, whew, how can I put this? Very carefully. <laughs> Throwing herself at the boys. Did you really just say that? Uh, that just doesn't sound like Lennox. <laughs> you need to pull your head out of your keister before that little milkshake succeeds and get one of those fine young men in trouble. You should really just stop right there. She may be willing to throw her life away, but she shouldn't drag one of those fine young men down with her. <laughs> I'm 
son of a bitch. Oh. Joe, hey, Joe, Lois, security, Lois, Lois. You know these nannies today with their high levels of testosterone. <laughs>
Oh! Amen. <laughs> Ugh, another text from Lennox. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm rinsing. I'm spitting. Wow, she can type that fast with one hand? Yeah. She won't talk to me, but she texts me every six seconds to protest her lack of privacy. <sighs> I had an impure thought about Joseph Gordon-Levitt. <laughs> this is great. You know, I only read her email because you made me. Yeah, and that sentence should have ended with, and I thank you, Joe. I thank you for getting me the truth. I never would have done it because I'm a big wuss. Yo, thank you, Joe, for fixing everything so that Lennox hates me. <laughs> you just have this pathological need to be liked. Clearly you don't. No. <laughs> You gotta repair the rupture, all right? So you go up there and you apologize and you start to mend your relationship. You can do it. You know, I don't need to be liked. Mrs. Geller hates me and I'm fine with that. Why does she hate me? <laughs> Lennox, can I come in? <whistles> Opening the door. <laughs> okay, you've made your point. You can stop texting me now. Oh, really? Because I thought you needed to know what I'm doing every second of the day and night since you don't trust me. Hey, look, I was 15 once, too, and I did crazy things, and I lied like a baseball player in front of Congress. <laughs> but I didn't lie. I'm not you, Aunt Mel. You know, that's true. For starters, you're a lot smarter than I was. And I made some bad choices, and I'm not just talking about back then. Today, when I read your email that Joe opened, <laughs> I violated your trust. You sure did. So, how about I even the score? I'll tell you a secret I've never told anyone. Better be a good one. Oh, it's a good one. All right, I have a little cute tattoo on my left butt cheek that says, Mel and Simon forever. What's up? I have no idea who Simon is. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Seriously, Lennox, I do trust you, and I don't want to lose what we have. I know. And it means a lot, you telling me that. So, Simon will be our little secret. Pinky promise. Good night, Len. Good night, Aunt Mel. So, how'd it uh, go? Good. Pretty good. I think we've reestablished our bond of trust. Good. I just got a message from Lennox. Mel Burke has a guy's name tattooed on her butt and she doesn't know who it is. <laughs> It's a really good bond you two got. Yeah, it's very funny. Delete that. I'd be happy to. Although I can't speak for the millions of other people that just read that on Twitter. <laughs> what a buzzkill. <laughs> Listen, Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hey, anybody got any aspirin? My head is just splitting. <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, come on, you guys. I used to love this Halloween stuff. And I used to poop in my pants. Hey, hey, hey. Ooh, I like what you've done with your hair. You're uh, parting a little bit differently. See, here's somebody in the Halloween spirit. Well, my spirits have nothing to do with Halloween and everything to do with this. I just got my Porsche out of the repo lot. Yeah, baby. Congratulations. <laughs> it must feel so good to have your penis back. Go ahead and make your jokes, Burke. The ladies, they love the Porsche. Yeah, until they meet the driver. You know, hey, whoa, how about channeling all that excessive macho into carving this pumpkin? Nice move. Insult me and then give me a weapon. Hey, Joe, now that you got your car back, do you hate my dad any less? Hate the man that made me lose everything? Nah. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right in the C. 
seeds. So, does everybody have their costume ready for tomorrow night? You're looking at it. I'm going as a teenager who thinks dressing up is lame. And I'm going as a brother, the kid who couldn't care less. Guys, it's Halloween. Come on, remember how much fun we used to have? Scary, sugar-filled family fun. Come on, if you can't think of any costume ideas, I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Burke, you give it a rest. Hey, Joe, can I talk to you in the other room? What? You don't understand what I'm doing here, do you? Yeah, annoying the kids. No. Oh, and um, me. Halloween was always a big deal in their family, all right? And Lennox and Ryder have lost so much. I'm sorry, it's so hard to listen to anything you have to say with that ax in your head. All right, look, I just want them to have a great Halloween, okay? So let's go back in there and pop them up. I don't want to... Ew. Hey guys, Joe was just telling me this cool Halloween story from when he was growing up. Long go family crazy fun. Go! What? Uh, okay, sure. Um... You know, when, when I was a kid, uh, all my friends um, got those cool store-bought costumes. Ooh, wow! <laughs> anyway, uh, I remember one year, I asked my dad if I could have one. You know what he did? He grabbed two brown paper bags, taped them together, cut a hole out from my head, right, and said, there you go, son, you're going as groceries. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Glad I could help. <laughs> you guys hear that? I didn't hear anything. No, 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 it was, that, it was that creaking noise. This is the second night in a row that I've heard it. Oh, you know what? I've heard that too. You know what it could be? The foundation settling. <laughs> it's not house sounds, all right? There is something up there. There is. It's called an attic. <laughs> there it is again. Maybe it's a rat or a family of rats. Joe, it's the house settling. That's what houses do, especially at night. Everybody knows that. There's nothing unusual or weird or strange about it. Sorry, my imagination. I guess you're stuck with me. Hey, uh, you guys find anything up there? You know anything at all? Nope. I took one into the attic and Joe took the other. Nothing. Oh, no evidence of your rodent friends, no rat droppings, or a little rat campfire, or a little DVD copy of Ratatouille. I'm telling you, there's a rat up there chewing on a wire. Just because we didn't find droppings means nothing. Means he's constipated. <laughs> or toilet trained. Hey, did someone eat my half of grapefruit? Uh, I think I did. But you hate grapefruit. So, until recently, she also hated the taste of beer. What? <laughs> He means that I still hate the taste of beer, you know, unless they changed it since my dad gave me, like, one sip when I was eight. <laughs> right? Right, beer. You. And where's my little hunk of lasagna? Don't you call me that. <laughs> Ryder ate it. Yeah, I must have. But, but that was gonna be my lunch. Now I have to buy something from that sandwich lady who looks like John Goodman. <laughs> I'll get it. having all you people live with me if I have to answer my own door. Hi, Myrna Sherwood from just across the street. Pink house. Oh, yes, I love all your little plastic geese with all the different seasonal outfits. <laughs> They're like my children. I got some of your mail. By mistake. Oh, that's so thoughtful. When I get a neighbor's mail, I just toss it in the neighbor's mailbox. Okay. You heard that, right? I am telling you, there are rats up there. Uh, Myrna, this is my nanny, Joe. Joe, Myrna, from across the street. Is that the goose lady? Uh-huh. Hey, what's going on? Hi. Hi. So, you've been hearing noises in the attic? Well, just, you know, creaking. <laughs> well, not to alarm you, but it could be something else. Like what? Oh, I'm sure the realtor told you everything when you bought the house about the unspeakable incident uh, you mean about the swingers that used to live here that made those movies different sounds hun <laughs> um, years ago a widower named gerhard mueller lived here quiet man no one even noticed he was gone until one day a telephone repairman glanced in the attic window all that was left of gerhard was bones oh! <laughs> How did it happen? 
It seems he went up to check on a noise, and then he fell and never came to, and the rats took care of the rest. So there used to be rats up there. <laughs> and ever since, all the kids have said that this house is haunted. But that's ridiculous, isn't it? Well, anyway, I need to go and get ready for all the little trick-or-treaters. Oh, you still have candy to buy? Oh, no. I turn off all the lights and hide in my bathroom. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Well, that explains a lot. Yeah, it sure does. I've got a discount on this house because some old German guy got eaten by rats. <laughs> Yay for me! Or Myrna's story could explain, you know, the presence of, uh... Well, sometimes when a traumatic event occurs somewhere, it actually alters the energy of that location for a long time. Maybe there's, a, uh, You know, a... Uh, what? A spirit. You mean a g -g -g ghost <laughs> Look, Scooby, a lot of intelligent people believe in ghosts. Mm, no, they don't. I am a very skeptical person by nature, but I'm telling you, there are books and articles. And cartoons. You know what? Forget I mentioned it. No, no, you should go. You should go talk to your ghost. I will, all right, but not till tonight. Why? Because it's better to talk to them when it's dark. Oh, because then you can't see the strings and sheets and whatnot? Oh, this is gonna be the kid's best Halloween ever. I thought you were dressing up for Halloween. Har, har, har. And seriously, you guys know what I'm supposed to be, right? Slutty investment banker. <laughs> what? No, I got a thing in my ear. Slutty you one translator? <laughs> Come on, there's still a big box of costumes here, guys. Who wants to be a hobo? Isn't that just like a homeless person? It's a jolly homeless person. <laughs> what about a nurse? Look, that's scary. Ooh, your insurance has expired. <laughs> Aunt Mel, we're just not doing the whole Halloween thing. Okay, but if you change your mind, it's here. All right, got the candy for the trick-or-treaters? Oh, thank you so much for doing that. Of course. Here we go. Uh, where are the candy bars and the peanut butter cups? This is just black licorice and more black licorice. Oh, wait, here's something different. Black licorice. What? Who doesn't like black licorice? Uh, human beings? <laughs> yeah, I've got a reputation to maintain. I am known for my badass Halloween candy. I can't be passing out suck like this. Black licorice is vintage and classic. Yeah, classic crap. <laughs> Joe, if I got this in my treat bag, there'd be a flaming bag of dog business thrown at your porch so fast. Fine, I'll go to the store and get something else. No, I'll go. Otherwise, you just come back with something else lame, like candy corn or liver treats. <laughs> Oh, there's your ghost buddy. Hey, don't you two have a play date? Not until it gets dark. Why? I mean, he's a German ghost. He's six hours ahead. You better get up there. <laughs> hey, wait. You know what I'm supposed to be, right? Pilot for porno airlines? <laughs> Hi, my name is, uh, Joe. I know you used to live here, Gerhard, and I hate to break this to you, but, uh, dude, you're dead. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is not your house anymore. Nope, this is, this is my house now. Actually, it's, it's Mel's house. I, I work for her. Technically, I'm freelance. It's, um, <laughs> It's an odd situation, really. I got caught up in this big financial swindle and lost everything, and this was the only job I could... <laughs> like, you need to hear about my problems. I'm gonna take Dad some meatloaf. He likes it, right? How long do you think you can keep this going? I thought we were in this together. Okay, but Aunt Mel and Joe are going to find him. I mean, it's only a matter of time. Oh, so what's your idea? You want to just turn him in? No. Ooh, take him some of that tuna casserole. Isn't he allergic to fish? Mm-hmm. 
Even though I can't see you or hear you, Gerhard, I feel your presence here. But you know what? I'm not scared. No, in fact, unlike other people, I... I welcome you, Gerhard. I welcome you into my home with... Oh, what the... <laughs> Scanlon? Joe, hey, you're... Looking good? I bet. It's not enough you take all my money, and you're trying to give me a heart attack? <laughs> in my defense, I didn't expect to be seen. Thus, three days in the attic. You've been up here for three days? Yeah, the kids brought me a hot plate and a space heater, all plugged into one outlet. I'm sorry about the blinky stuff. Tell me, how have you been? You ruined my life. There, we're all caught up. I understand. Your anger is to be expected. You also understand your nose is to be broken? Go ahead. I deserve it. Of course, seeing my face rearranged could be kind of traumatic for Ryder and Lennox. Yeah, don't you think you already took care of the traumatizing with the running off and abandoning them? The months I spent without them have been hell. Yeah, well, let me help you out. After I beat you senseless, I'm gonna turn you in. That's fair. Look, it's been so great seeing my kids these past few days. I was really just hoping for one last night with them, then I'll turn myself in. That's all you want? Just one last night? It would mean the world to me. Well, in that case, no. <laughs> I'm calling the cops. You see what just happened there? See, you thought you were gonna get something good and then I screwed you. You know, kind of like a uh, Ponzi scheme. <laughs> Hey, gang. Where are you uh, headed? Nowhere. Really? What's in another bag? Nothing. So taking a bag full of nothing nowhere, that's believable. <laughs> okay, here's the truth. We were so inspired by you that we decided to cut this bag up, make it into costumes, and go as groceries. <laughs> it's an homage. <laughs> I saw your dad up there. What? My dad here in this house? <laughs> Back off, he's not buying it. Yeah, well, not now. Come on, Joe. You're not gonna call the cops, are you? It's, it's one last Halloween, and then he's gonna turn himself in. We can't put this off any longer, Ryder. Your dad broke the law. Several of them. Yeah, well, if the law can't give a kid a couple hours with his father, then the law blows. Dad can't run forever. He deserves to go to jail. But Ryder deserve. We deserve one last night with him. Please, Joe. You guys got till midnight. Stay up there in the attic, and don't you be the ward of this to your Aunt Mel. I'll tell her you guys went to a Halloween party or something. Thank you. Don't mention it. Ever. <laughs> Joe, just for future reference, what could I have done back there to make that performance more believable? Not be lying. <laughs> Check this out. They're called candy bars, and kids like them because they don't taste like sugar-coated tires. <laughs> so, how'd it go with the ghost up there? Was he more white and floaty or green and slimy? And more importantly, did you bust him? You know what? I hate to say this, but you were right. There is uh, nothing up there. So it was just pal sounds. You were totally, completely right. Oh my gosh, you saw something up there. <laughs> no, I didn't. <gasps> When you lie, your voice goes higher. Well, it does not, Joe. <laughs> Nothing. Rats. Rat. Lewis. Lewis? 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 <laughs> Scumbag Lewis, he's in my attic? Yes, 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 he's up there right now. Are you joking? Yep, yep, this is my, uh, my hilarious Halloween prank. <laughs> it's no severed hand, I'll grant you, but... What are we supposed to do now? I mean, turn him in? Oh, for crying out loud, why did you tell me he was up there? What? You forced me to tell you. You did that thing where you looked at me. You're doing it again! Well, I can't just call the cops. I mean, those poor kids. No, we I'm an elected official. I can't be harboring a fugitive. I've got no choice. Wait a minute, wait a minute, look. The kids begged me for one more night with their father. And then he promised me he was gonna turn himself in. And you believed him? He's manipulating you. I can't believe you fell for his crap again. I did not fall for his crap again. I can't believe I fell for his crap again. <laughs> not 
believe I fell for his crap again. Yeah, well, here's how you can tell Lewis is lying. He's breathing. <laughs> What's this? Oh, it's from Lewis. He says he took the kids to Rick Doral's house. That's that amazing Halloween party they went to every year. Well, then let's go there and get them. Yeah, if they're there. Well, you don't think he was telling the truth? Okay, let me just uh, take that back. <laughs> Hello, officer. I need you to send a police car to Rick Doral's house on Lakeview. Yeah, I don't know the address, but you can't miss it. There's like 20 zombie-eaten bodies in the front driveway. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because you're going to find Louis Scanlon there. What do you mean, join the club? What's happening? What club? What? So what if Louis Scanlon is a popular costume this year? I've got the real one. I swear. Hello? <gasps> hey, I voted for your pay raise. <laughs> That's it. We have to go to that party. Wait a minute. I thought you don't believe that they're going to be there. I don't, but we're desperate. Right. Oh, wait. If we're going to the Doral's house, you can't get in without a costume. Forget that. We don't have time for a costume. Come on. What are you, what are you doing? There. Ha. You're Mr. Clean. Let's go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, great. Scan could be inside any one of these costumes. Teenage witch, that's cute. You should have done something like that. Ugh, been there, done that. <laughs> All right, they always did everything in a theme, so look for three people in a theme-like costume, you know, like Marx Brothers, Teletubbies, any of the greats. Oh, that's them! Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Go. Oh, gotcha, <laughs> Lewis. Oh, hey, hi. It's a great costume. I had no idea who you are. <laughs> I still don't. Here, you might want to put that back on. Enjoy the party, guys. Still think that looks like Lewis? I took a shot. No, you didn't take a shot. You pointed. I'm the one that took the shot. Mel, Joe, have you tried the punch? Lewis. Lewis. Mm. Actually, tonight I'm a cop. You, of course, recognize my prisoner, who will not speak without her defense attorney. Been a while, Lewis. So much has happened that is all your fault. I haven't really had the chance to tell you how much I appreciate you looking after the kids these several months. Well, it was kind of the right thing to do. You lied to me, Lewis. You told me you were going to stay up there in the attic. I left a note. Don't blame my dad, all right? We asked him to take us here. Well, sorry, Lewis, but the party's over. I figured that. We got what we wanted. One last night. You mind if I say goodbye? Make it quick. Hold this. Guys, I'm going to have to go away for a little while, but it's been wonderful. And I know everything's going to be OK, because you're growing up great. You got your Aunt Mel, then you got my old friend, Mr. Clean. Dad, I hate that you're going to have to go to jail. I got lawyers. Maybe I'll get lucky. Come here. Bye, Daddy. Louis Scanlon? Ah, didn't expect you so soon. Turn around. Guys, I love you. It's all going to be OK. Really. You know, it was very courageous of your father to surrender like that. And things are going to be a lot better now that he's decided to take responsibility for his actions. That's weird. Lewis and that cop are laughing. Waving, huh? Driving off on a Porsche. That's my Porsche. Hey! Cook you something? No, uh, it's for Ryder. He ought to eat, but he doesn't feel like coming down. How are you feeling, honey? I'm not as bummed out as him, because nothing my dad does surprises me. Hey, uh, Joe, do you mind if I take Ryder this weird noodly stuff? Weird? It's baked ziti. Yeah, go ahead. Take as much of the weird noodle stuff as you want. Wow, this must have really messed with her. She's doing something nice for her brother. Scanlon is all over the news, by the way. Apparently, he made a clean getaway. You know that guy posing as that fake cop? He's the one in charge of all those overseas accounts. Hey, if I had a badge like that cop, would that have helped? No, I'm still lost. I'm a sexy Secret Service agent. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could see you throwing yourself at the president. <laughs> but not to protect him. I'll take that. God, this is really going to be a tough one to get over. Yeah, but they're young. They're resilient. 
not talking about the kids. I'm talking about me. I had my Porsche back for like one day. Now I don't even know where she is or if they're taking good care of her. Aw, poor baby. and Joey is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Joe, Joe, check this out. You were mentioned on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Well, they're all sort of the front page with these things, but lucky. Don't be so surprised, Burke. I actually had a light before this. I just didn't show up on your doorstep in a basket. Well, I'm proud. It's not every day your nanny gets ink in a national publication. Well, it's not every day that I'm your nanny. <laughs> Thank, Thank God. God. <laughs> Joe Longo, former VP at Scanlon Financial, was the executive who plucked Kevin Shatkin from his job in the mailroom, whatever, whatever. Shatkin secured $1.7 billion in backing for his new hedge fund. Ratface Shatkin? That little sleazel? That guy he used to work for me. He couldn't even get my coffee order right, and they just gave him a billion dollars? 1.7. Oh! Hey, I just figured that thing out. Sorry. <laughs> oh, hey! Still works. <laughs> I'll tell you, Burke, they make something in the good old uh, Romania <laughs> and it stays made. Look, I'm sorry, Joe. I, I, I didn't read it. I just, you know, saw your name and I, I didn't realize it was going to be like throwing acid in my eyes. <laughs> Look, Joe, you're down, but you're not out. I'm going to be back in the financial world. You mark my words, Burke. Absolutely. No doubt about it. So what are we having for dinner? <laughs> you know, I was the first person in my business school to make VP. And everybody knows that Joe Longo always made his investors money. Okay, you know what? You just take it easy tonight, we'll order in. I just can't believe they gave Shaq in a billion dollars. He's out there building his global empire, and I'm in here building a metal rack. To avoid doing the laundry. Look, Joe, you are fantastic at what you do. And if there were such a thing, I bet you would be on the front page of the Wall Street nanny. Burke, promise me you're never gonna volunteer for a suicide hotline. I guess you're stuck with me. Here are your notes from fifth period chemistry. Thanks, Beckett. What's with a different color paper? Oh, I used the uh, national terror alert system to color code them by likelihood of being on the final. <laughs> wow, way to use your lethal powers of OCD. <laughs> You're the first person to even notice my color coding. And may I say your eyes are the color of the highest alert for beauty. <laughs> so I'll text you by the end of the week and we can set up a date. A date? To study. Oh, yeah, sure. That'd be... That'd be great. And also, if, you know, if you ever need any help writing papers, I could write them for you. No, thanks. Appreciate the help with chemistry, though. <laughs> anytime. Seriously, anytime. Bye. Oh. I see what you're doing here, Lennox. You're using that poor kid to get ahead in school. Duh. You really think it's okay that you're taking advantage of that little nerd? Uh, sweet kid. He got something out of it, too. The joy of being near me. Well, I see, and he can think back to that beautiful moment the next time that he's, uh, getting killed by a wizard online. Okay, I got your email. What's the big meeting all about? Miss Burke, take a seat. Oh, no. Not another intervention. I've already gotten rid of so many of my vices. I mean, I don't have anything left except purses and chocolates. Please don't take away my purses. It's where I keep my chocolate. This is a meeting about the future. Oh, please don't quit. I'll be better. I'll Will wash you? a dish. I'm not quitting. Will you take a seat, please? OK, look, <clears throat> here is the deal. For years, um, I've been keeping notes of financial advice, all right? And I finally pulled it all together into an e-book, and I am starting my own company. Ooh, Longco, Longo Co, Longo Corp, International House of Longo. Huh? Use any of them. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna create a website, all right? I'm gonna make financial videos online that support the sale of my book, all right? The only problem is that um, 
Obviously, right now, you know, I can't get a bank loan. Oh, so... you need to borrow money. Okay. No, 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 no. I don't need to borrow money. This is, this is not a handout. This is an opportunity for you to get involved as an investor on the ground floor of my company. Got it, got it, got it. So, uh, how much do you need? Well, I'm, I'm gonna need $5,000 in startup capital for um, web design, uh, hosting, and bandwidth. And... Okay, $5,000. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you want to see my PowerPoint presentation? No, Joe, it's okay. I don't need to see anything. I trust you. No, 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 no. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Look, look, look. You have to look at my prospectus, okay? Here. <clears throat> yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So, oh, okay, charts, see that? Wait yeah, a graphs, yeah. But that yeah. Chart oh, yay, is... okay. And I'm writing, and here is your check. But this is, this is not how it works, okay? I make a presentation, and then you say, wow, that was really great. Let me think about it, and I'll get back to you. Okay. Let me think about it, and I'll get back to you. Yay! <laughs> Is this a pity check? Are you just doing this because you like me? No, I don't like you. That's how much I believe in you. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's shake on it. Shake? No, 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 no. I've drawn up contracts, all right? I actually have a notary coming over later this afternoon. Wait, who needs a notary? It's a friendly transaction between friends. No, 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 no. This is a business transaction between business partners. Okay, partner. Deal? Deal. Ah, this is so exciting! <laughs> Team Burke Longo. Okay, Longo Burke. Yeah. I I don't have an ego about these things, but just Burke Longo sounds better. Mel, um, look, we are we are not partners, partners, okay? We are <laughs> we are partner, silent partner, so shh. But uh, nah, I, I just said silent partner, okay? Here, I refer you to my prospectus. Let me refer you to my check. <laughs> Besides, I don't really do silent. Ask any of my other partners. I make a lot of noise. <laughs> That's so gross. Okay. So, how are the opening uh, credits coming along, buddy? Uh, it's a little rough, but here, take a look. All right. Okay. Very impressive. <laughs> and I gotta like the price, right? Taking you to see a movie. Uh, no, no, not just any movie. We're talking Tron Legacy in December. Opening weekend, midnight show, bottomless nachos. You drive a hard bargain. So how quick can your uh, webmaster turn this whole thing around? Uh, well, Larry's got marching band on Tuesday and allergy shots on Thursday. Uh, but I think he could fit you in live before midterms Friday. I got a real crack team. I just thought I'd drop by the set and see how the shoot is going, you know, chat up the cast and crew. <laughs> it's going fine. Great, good. So, Joe, I uh, wanted to run some of my ideas past you before you get started. Uh, well, you're a little late. You shot the first one without me? No, we shot the first three without you. But I'm a partner! I was supposed to be in the loop. I was not looped. Relax, all right? We didn't really shoot that much. We just shot a few of the videos, you know, so you would have something to come down here and look at and make your comments on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're just trying to get around me. No. Right? No, it's not his exact plan at all. Thanks, kid. <clears throat> Come on over here and take a look, partner. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Welcome to Joe Knows. <laughs> I am Joe Longo. And today's subject, futures contracts. What are they? How can you use them? You may not know, but Joe knows. <laughs> agreement to take or make delivery on a date in the future. If you like what you heard, order your copy of Monetizing Your Future, Investment Tools for the 22nd Century. I'm Joe Longo, and this has been... Very painful. Oh, how long was that? 18 minutes, 22 seconds. Oh, I feel like I just died six times. God, those are way too long. I mean, these are webcasts. They're supposed to be tiny nuggets of wisdom, not big boulders of boredom. Everything in there is essential information. Joe, here's how the internet works. Click, I want to see the cat play the piano. Click, I want to see the dramatic chipmunk. Click, Charlie bit my finger. 
Pardon my truth, but um, I'm the one with the master's degree here, and you have no experience in business. Okay, you know what? Experience is overrated. I got into politics with no experience. Yeah, don't get her wrong. She knew all the issues. Don't get me wrong. I knew all the issues. You know, I, I had them down. I mean, but anybody can spout the issues. I had something the other candidates didn't have. Daddy in the senator business? No, like ability. You post these, nobody's gonna watch them. Well, look, I appreciate the input, all right? Consider it uh, considered, but we are going to post these webcasts as they are. Well, contact Homeland Security, because there's going to be a big bomb. <laughs>
Mel, I'm gonna look ridiculous. You're not gonna look ridiculous flying on your private Learjet made of solid gold from all the books you're gonna sell. Trust your consultant. Come on, I got Mel Burke elected to city council. That's no easy task with this lightweight's background. Wait, and action. Oh, hey, what's up? This is uh, Joe Nose of Joe Longo, and that's me. So today we're gonna be talking about futures, all right? And futures are really just an agreement to buy some commodity sometime in the future. Oh, hey, Joe, come here, look. We put up the new webisode two hours ago, and we already have a 1,000 unique visitors. We're a hit. It's fantastic. Joe Lando is back, baby. How many book orders we had? Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. None. <laughs> Zero? Well, if you round up. Yeah, but look at the comments. Joe knows what I like. Hot, hot, hot. Ooh, he can shake my money tree anytime. <laughs> People are loving it. I don't know, it looks like your consultant came through for you. Uh, yeah, but nobody's buying the book, so what the heck is the point? And look at these comments, what the heck are these? I'm interested in high yield returns, Joe. Can you take off your pants? <laughs> uh, and th th this, this one, I, I can't even say with the kid in the room. <laughs> yeah, that one was pretty funny. In a way that deeply offends me. <laughs> well, Henny, did you guys see this email? Look at this. Uh, Nick Sporting Goods wants to make an advertising deal. They love your workout. They want to sponsor the site. Wow, seriously? Joe, here's your gold mine. Focus the webcast on the workouts. That's what people are responding to. Follow the money. No. <laughs> Look, this, this is not about finance, Mel. This is not what I set out to do. Well, I'm sorry, but Columbus didn't set out to discover America, but I'd say that worked out pretty well for everyone involved. <laughs> Except for, you know, um, all the Indians. <laughs> Look, I'm not doing this pumping and pimping thing. No, I am not selling out. Okay. Then I guess for the first time in his business life, Joe Longo is gonna post a loss. Meet me in the garage in 15 minutes, dude. We're doing ab crunches. <laughs> and, uh, and tax tips? No! Just friggin' ab crunches. <laughs> Looks like you've really got the concepts down, Lennox. You'll ace the final. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. True that. <laughs> So, uh, that's about it. Oh, wait, you've got a cookie crumb on your lip. Yeah, I gotta go. But, uh, you were gonna tell me about the space program and gravity and how objects are attracted to each other. Yeah, maybe at school sometime. Uh, Beckett, wait. I was gonna ask you if you maybe wanted to go out with me Saturday, like on a real date. Gee, I'm sorry, I've got other plans. But, but you can't turn me down. I'm me and you're you. <laughs> Look, people saw you talking to me in the hall after class, and I guess they figured if a girl as cute as you would talk to me, well, anyhow, Felicia Wallace asked me out, and I said, sure. Felicia Wallace? She's a slut. <laughs> That's what they tell me. I'm so sorry. But look at it this way. You are a very smart, attractive, and interesting girl. Okay, you're gonna have the opportunity to dump many, many guys in your lifetime. But this might be Beckett's only shot at being the dumper. So I guess I gave him an incredible gift. Mm. You did. You are a giver. <laughs> Awesome, exciting, wonderful news. We just got our first check from Nick Sporting Goods. Look, it's made up to JoNosFinance.com. Oh, I feel like my little baby just took her first steps. Why is my website a girl? It just is. Here, relish the sweet smell of success. Actually, it's kind of funny because I dripped some relish on it and it actually smells hey, like... Mel, do you mind? I have to get a leg of lamb in the oven and we need to keep things on schedule in here. Sorry, of course. Yeah, you're making with the capitalism, rocking the entrepreneurial world, you know, on your way to creating an empire. All thanks to little old me. All right, Ryder, let's get ready to do this, okay? Full squat lifts, take one. <clears throat> hey, I'm Joe Longo here with the uh, lift of the week. The uh, squat lift will tone up the greatest number of muscles in the fewest moves. One important thing to remember is uh, stretch first. You want to be gentle with your groin. 
I was uh, looking for you. And I was looking for you. Well, we found each other. Yeah, listen, uh, I just, I wanted to talk to you about Joe Knows. Actually, no, you know No, please, I... let me. Well, okay, I've been thinking a lot about the webcasts, and, you know, the only reason I wanted to lend you, sorry, invest the money, was so that you could start your own business and be happy, but watching you a little while ago, you weren't happy. I know. No, I, I'm almost I finished. Did, I, uh, All right, Joe, I, I just care about you too much to let you do this. You know, so just don't worry about the money. Pay me back when you can. But please stop doing the bodybuilding webcasts. I stopped doing the bodybuilding webcasts. Without telling your partner? What's this? Sweet victory. I made a deal with Nick's Sporting Goods. I sold him the Joe Knows site outright. I even made a tidy little profit. Oh, $5,002. Yes. <laughs> Joe Longo always makes his investors money. Thanks. I can ride the bus now. Almost. So, no regrets about selling our, your, the business? Nah. Look, I could have made the fit this thing work, you know, but it's not what I want to do. My heart just wasn't in it. I'm going to be back on top of the financial world, I promise you that. But hey, it was a uh, pleasure doing business with you, partner. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it really wasn't. It was worse than paternity hazing at Ball State. Yeah. <laughs> I've had bouts of food poisoning more enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't see eye to eye. Uh. <laughs> we just rubbed it the wrong way. way. I was going to say that. <laughs> Partners. <laughs> mm. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go to the garage and break down the rest of the set. You know, I have an idea about how to do that. No, 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 no. Don't start with no, no, ideas. No, no, no. I know what I'm doing. I'm the one who put it up. Right, I'm, I'm going to be taking it down. <laughs>